Most people either told or believe that the load rating of the roof rack is what the vehicle can carry, but I can tell you with 100% certainty it is not. Let me show you the problem by putting this into practice. Let's take this 100 kilogram rated roof rack and we put it on this Hilux. We can now carry 100 kilos. Wrong. The Hilux has in fact a roof rating. The manufacturer's roof rating of the vehicle is 75 kilos, which means that that roof rack might be rated to 100 kilos, but it doesn't mean that your vehicle can now carry 100 kilos. It can only do 75 kilos on top of the roof. That's it. And that's what's so misleading. Just the tip of the iceberg. Static loads versus dynamic loads. Which one matters the most? How do you find the real, the true roof load of your vehicle? And something that many people get wrong, do you add the weight of the roof rack on top or not? All of this information I'll give you as simple as I possibly can to help you understand what you need to look out for so you can ask the right questions. Myself and the roof rack weigh 117 kilos combined. Add the max tracks, add this box, we are at capacity. It doesn't take long to fill your roof rack. Yes, I weigh nearly 90 kilos, but so do rooftop tents. To help explain roof load ratings, let's bring in the Ford Ranger. 85 kilo roof load rating this vehicle has. Let's add a roof rack. That's about 25 kilos. Deduct that from the roof load capacity because it sits on top of the roof. We need brackets to fit the roof rack. Add the awning, the recovery tracks, the shovel, and let's throw a swag on top. We are 10 kilos over already. You might be questioning, what's the point of having a roof rack on top of a dual cab ute? And that's a valid question. But just keep in mind, some people put a rooftop tent on top of dual cab utes. And those who generally carry a rooftop tent also have an awning and a few other various things attached to that roof rack. So how far over are they? How far over are you? It doesn't take much. That was a dual cab ute. Let's pick out a random wagon you'd expect to have a higher roof load capacity. With a Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, they can only hold 80 kilos. That's less than the Ranger we just looked at. The bigger the roof, it doesn't necessarily mean the more weight it can take. With this vehicle in particular having a bigger platform on the roof, you would generally go for a much bigger awning and other various cargo that a lot of people tend to carry when they head off-road. The weight is adding up fast. Now picture a rooftop tent on top of the Pajero Sport. If you think 75 kilos is a bit much for a rooftop tent, that is the average weight, anywhere between 50 kilos and up to 100 kilos. And some rooftop tents, you can put your bedding inside, that weight would likely be higher. But if you thought that was bad, check out the Suzuki Jimny. Doesn't matter if it's a three door or a five door, 30 kilos is the max roof load rating on this particular vehicle. What can you put up there? The roof rack might be about 15 kilos, and that's being generous. You put a swag up there, it's already over. You put an awning up, it's over. And this is why it's so important to know your roof load rating. It's the key to everything. As I had just recently purchased a new wagon, the search for its roof load rating led me through a maze of information. Determined to avoid online forums, notorious for misinformation. Well, we know that's bullshit. My search ended up leading me to the manufacturer's website. After much digging, these were my results. It wasn't exactly easy to find out. This is a 76 series Land Cruiser. It has a roof rating of 150 kilos. This information was not straightforward to get. I found the information the hard way by working back on calculations from the accessory parts page. And that's a ridiculous way of going about it. I mean, who's gonna do that? And in case you are wondering, yes, I did call the dealership before I started looking myself. In fact, I rang two dealerships and neither of them had any clue what I was even talking about. So, I decided to ring some full drive accessory stores as well and other dealerships and I kept getting the same kind of answer. Either I don't know or they will quote the roof rack rating. This in fact led me down the road to making this content. As I've been in this situation a few years ago and spoke out about it after being called out on something I wasn't even aware of. My roof load being grossly overloaded on my Hilux. I made a video which opened the can of worms. 
This video changed the industry to a degree. However, it's still not right. And just to clarify, I'm not targeting any particular brands because since that video, efforts have been made. The problem is no one has linked the roof racks and the roof load ratings from the vehicle manufacturers. There is a big gap and this is what causes confusion, misleading information, and that's the core of the entire problem. So I gathered my team and we made it our mission to get as many roof load ratings as we could to save you from the unclear advice. Nearly 30 plus vehicles with the roof load ratings, which will be shown on screen at some point in this video. Before that, static loads and dynamic loads. Dynamic is when the vehicle is moving, you're traveling, you've got the load on your roof, the vehicle is designed to behave in a certain way. And putting too much weight on the roof changes the behavior of the vehicle, also makes it dangerous if you've got too much weight on the roof. Static, on the other hand, is when you arrive at camp. Dynamic load is what you need to pay attention to when you load up for a trip while you're on the road. That's the most important one. With the static load, it just means that you can rely a little bit more on what the roof rack is rated to, which means you can put a rooftop tent on it, you can throw two people in it, and you'll be fine, as long as you're not driving. And a static load is not easy to find. In fact, there's only one vehicle that we can confirm. For example, the Ineos Grenadier can hold 420 kilos on its roof while it's sitting still. However, while it's driving, only 150 kilos. Does that make sense? Picture this vehicle here. I don't actually know what the static load is rated for this, but I know what the moving load is. Static load, I would assume, would be maybe double. Probably a safe bet, which means that I could put a rooftop tent on here and have two people inside it. However, you're not going to be sleeping on the roof of your car while you're driving. So that's the difference. When the car's not moving, it can withstand more weight, but while it's moving, you don't want that much weight on your roof. You now understand roof loads, and depending on what you're gonna use your vehicle for, you can actually gain more allowance. How? Don't get a roof rack, just get roof bars. If you wanna have that rooftop tent and an awning, on top of that Ranger we spoke about earlier, by removing that platform and replacing it with roof bars, you are allowing yourself an extra 20 kilos, thereabouts. With the Jimny in particular, if you replace that with roof bars, you can now have an awning and perhaps even carry a swag on the roof. So it comes down to what you are going to use the rack for, or what are you gonna use the roof bars for? Here is the most complex thing when it comes to roof racks. Some brands reduce the load capacity of your roof if you are off-roading. Yep, there is a difference between on-road and off-road. Not every brand, however. Let's look at this Hilux, representing what I found out the hard way. Two identical Hiluxes, 75 kilogram roof rating. Let's add a 25 kilo roof rack to both of these vehicles. Both have 50 kilograms of capacity remaining. Everything is still as expected until the Hilux on the right hits the dirt road. It's off-road now. It's now reduced to a 25 kilogram load. And that's because the 75 kilo roof rating is now reduced by one third. Confusing, yeah I know. What's the point of having the rack? And just to clarify, it's not all brands either. The two same Hiluxes with two different roof racks both head off road. One is reduced, one is not. It all comes down to the brand. Trust me, do your research. More importantly, how is it mounted to your vehicle? Is it pop riveted to the roof? That's the trouble I got myself into and a few other people as well. Roof racks coming off on roads, during accidents, during heavy braking, off road, nut and bolted, using the existing tracks on your vehicle perhaps. The hardware that's designed to have a roof rack is the best to use. It's time to unleash the roof load ratings. And a big thanks to the whole team because we put in a lot of effort to find all of this. So you don't have to go through the mud to find out exactly what your vehicle needs. Feel free to pause the screen at any particular point. But try not to pause me in an awkward moment.